Hey, scholars. Ribs are on the smoker, so I guess this is as good a time as any to talk about the design of goods and services and what it's all about. This is really our first of the 10 OM decisions that we've dug into in any type of depth. So let's spend a couple of minutes and talk about what I consider the high points of design of goods and services and also what your authors did. They start off with a discussion of Regal Marine and talk about the fact that you know, they're always looking for <clears throat> ways to do things better, faster, cheaper. And I drew on the board the, uh, the two pyramids that intersect like that <clears throat> with the uh, top one being price and the bottom one being quality. And our job as operations managers is to drive the price down and the quality up at the same time. <clears throat> you know, how, you do, how do you do that? Regal Marine had a number of good examples in there, but certainly technology uh, using CAD CAM programming versus a more traditional draftsman, figuring out ways to uh, build the boats where, you know, you build half <clears throat> one line, half in another line, and bring them together, but make sure you bring them together in a quality fashion. Um, so, you know, there's, there's <clears throat> always ways to do it, and it's up to us as operations managers to figure out what's the best way to do it. All right, so uh, we talked a little bit about, okay, so why? What do, why are we always looking at doing things better, faster, cheaper? Well, one is competition. It'll eat your lunch if you, uh, if you try to stand still. We talked about the second law of thermodynamics and how the second law of thermodynamics basically says you can't stand still. Um, you know, if, you, uh, if you, you're not growing, if you're not putting new energy into the system, the system will cease to exist through entropy or competition. And we talk about a number of examples of that in class. Um, Kmart's one that comes to mind that uh, thought they had it dialed in, thought they could just continue to do things the way they had done them in the past, and they were uh, they were 100% wrong. You cannot do that. Talked about the uh, <clears throat> product life cycle, uh, four phases of it. <clears throat> Mentioned this in a couple videos ago. Introduction, growth, <clears throat> maturity, decline. So four phases. When should you start looking at the next idea? There's probably companies out there in the Silicon Valley that are looking at the next idea before the current idea is even in the introduction phase. Um, you know, there, there are a couple of moves ahead of the chessboard <clears throat> to anything that anybody else is thinking about. So critically important to, uh, to know that you, you certainly are going to be in a rough situation if you wait until the decline phase to start trying to make changes. We talked about Burger King as an example of that, where they seem to just <clears throat> throw things against the wall and see if they stick. Well, they're in decline. You know, it's, it's, hard to, <clears throat> it's hard to take a lot of, get a lot of capital and investment in a business if a business is in decline. Um, you know, McDonald's is ahead of it. Walmart's ahead of it. Um, Burger King's not. Um, <clears throat> whether that's going to be the end of them, I don't know, but I certainly wouldn't buy a lot of stock in them. Oh, and that's not a stock advice, by the way. Um, <clears throat> we spent some time and we talked about the um, steps that <clears throat> we go through in introducing a product. And it started with concept and ended with evaluation. We actually did an exercise in class. That's a hint to you that that's something I consider important as you're studying for your, exam your test and your exams. So, you know, keep, keep that in mind, but uh, we covered that pretty well in class. Um, talked a couple classes ago about you know, designing goods and services. Well, you want to design them for a market. Um, you know, who's your target market? Are they going to buy this thing or aren't they going to buy it? And should you ask them up front? <clears throat> um, you know, I, I think focus groups are okay. I've done them before. Okay, well, I'll go back to the Henry Ford quote. That if I ask my customers what they want, they're going to want to. They're going to tell me they want a faster horse. They don't know, so we got to be figuring it out as product development people and or operations managers. Um, we talked um, about how to, uh, in a couple of examples in the text, about doing things better. That uh, clamp that was three fifty going down to eighty cents. I thought it was a good example. Um, of reducing costs by simplifying the product. And I think that's about it uh, on the design of goods and services. <clears throat>